Well met, everyone. I am Rich the Lich, and today I'm going to briefly show you my DM cheat sheet. This is my one-page DM's reference sheet. It's a piece of paper, a single sheet that I always have printed out, and I always bring this to my table, and I have it with me. I can jot down some notes, and as the name indicates, I can reference some things off of this very quickly. I think more importantly, the point of today's video is just to be able to have a place where I can put a link to this file in the description. So I have it as a downloadable PDF completely for free. You don't have to do any anything specific or run through any hoops. As far as I know, it should pull up as sort of a Google Drive link available to all. So you're free to download this and bring this to your table. I made this from scratch. So not only did I lay it out in InDesign, which is not a big deal, but I put down all of the things that are useful for my style and the way that I play. So if you are a fan of the way that I do things and you kind of want to do as I do, I think this can be very beneficial to you. I will not talk through everything that's here because much of it is going to be very self-explanatory, but I'm just going to kind of give you a brief overview on the different sections and the things that are on this sheet. And more importantly, I think the process or the reasons why I've included them here. First and foremost, I want to always ensure that this thing is one single page. I think you can find a lot of information and there's a bunch of stuff that you might potentially need to refer to very quickly, but I've seen a lot of DM reference sheets and all these 5e DM cheat sheets that are just so saturated with text. The text is, you know, four or five point font. It's really small. You have to squint at it. Granted, a lot of the text that you'll see here when you print this out is quite small as well. But sometimes there's almost too much information. And I think the other big thing is when you start getting these DM reference sheets that are four or five pages, I understand you have a DM screen, which can kind of have this entire sort of landscape format of four to five pages of reference. I like to keep everything down to one page. It's the manner in which I can start thinking through the same that I would do for writing a book or writing a D&D world. Try and keep things as concise as possible. Give me the nuts and bolts of what I need. So this is one single page, and I'm going to kind of talk through a little bit of it. So up first, I haven't zoomed in a little bit. I'll do a quick zoom out to show you. This is the actual size. So you can see there it is. There's a bunch of little things. This is what I would bring to my table, okay? So let's take a look here. Top left, I don't want to say there's any real order of importance, but this is paramount for me in my games. I need to have some names. I want to always think through what are the, the, the reference points that I need that I need to rattle off very quickly to not break any pacing and flow and bring some more believability to my world. And when the PC start to ask some questions of what was that one merchant's name and who is that dwarf that helped me get through the front gate, I can rattle off something very quickly. Of course, you can simply pick the name that fits. So I've got 20 male names. I have 20 female names. You can also just roll a 1d20 if you want to randomize it. So if I need a quick name for an NPC, I roll that d20 and I refer to it. Cool. As a male, it's Canlith. As a female, it's Snyga. I've also got 20 locations. So the PCs might ask, what is the name of the forest that we need to go into? Or, ooh, we came upon those one ruins. What were they called again? That's right. The NPC Canlith told you about the ruins of, I roll the d20, the ruins of Fallwraith. Okay, so it's really beneficial to have locations in various places as a quick reference point as well. And then finally, the last bit of names is a D12 chart table where you can roll on to give you some names for ships or taverns or things like that. Okay, that's always very important. You know, the NPC Grindle tells you to meet him at the Slumber Hulk. It just kind of helps you rattle that stuff off very quickly. I don't need to have much more detail than that. I may have some details on what sort of food is available in the region and what NPCs they may meet, but it's nice when you say you come upon this wooden building that's a little bit tilted and seemingly sunken into the ground a little and hanging from a placard, you know, off of one chain. It's kind of just, mm, 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 mm. that's the sound of it leaning on one chain is the sign that says this is the toothless orc. You know this is the inn you need to get to. But just rattling that off very quickly always gives the illusion that you're more prepared than maybe you otherwise are. So I like to have names. So that's what you see at the top is four lists of names, and I always like the element of randomizing it because it just makes it kind of cool and exciting. If you don't know what name you're going to use anyway, why not randomize it, right? Next, we've got PHP page reference. So this is all just for the player's handbook. I know there's some important information you might want to reference from Xanathar's and the DM's Guild, but the PHP is kind of the bread and butter of the reference book that you want to look through, okay? And it's okay to kind of pull things back a little bit and flip through your book. I've talked about this in previous videos. If you're going to really obsess about and get into the nuts and bolts of 
an entire section that's going to bog down gameplay for two minutes, maybe delegate that to one of your players and tell him, hey, can you look up that spell for me and figure out exactly how grapple works? And then let's just move on an initiative. And then when we come back to it, we'll use whatever information you give me. So yes, there are going to be times where you need to flip through the book, but I like just sort of a quick reference point. And I've put quite a few categories in here. So you can see that we've got reference pages of where to go if I want to quickly look up armor in case someone asks, Ooh, I don't know if I want to use breastplate or plate mail. How will that change? I can quickly say, hey, take a look at PHP 145. I don't have to look it up, but I can just tell them. That way, during off time or when it's not their round, they can kind of look and start formulating that plan for themselves of whether or not they want to invest the time and energy into looting that thing because they can get a quick reference point of whether that armor is good or bad. Combat, if I, there's something I need to wrangle through with grappling checks or whatever it may be, how does the ready action exactly work? You know, can you move beforehand or afterwards? Combat is on 189. Conditions, that's always a big one, which is why you'll see kind of a little blurb about it over here on the right. But conditions start on page 290. What are the rules for cover? That's a big one as well. Page 196. If I want to look at some EXP charts and proficiency bonus, maybe I want to start thinking about some CRs and some challenge rating that's appropriate. I need to think through what proficiency bonus should my PCs have at level 9. I can refer to that by quickly going to page 15. Feats, gear, rest, skills, and so on. Skills is similar to conditions. I do have a little bit more information that sort of elaborates on that, but doesn't quite give me the full breakdown of what each of these things do. I've seen a lot of cheat sheets that give you that. And that's fine. If you're going to use multiple pages, that's fine. Because that is important to not just know that exhaustion and incapacitated are conditions and what page they're on. I need to know what they do. In my case, I always just refer to page 290 and read it as I go. The reason why I don't have it listed out is that's going to take up its own sort of page. And that defeats the point of what I'm trying to go with here, which is keeping everything a little more concise, more efficient, and on one single page, okay? So that's what I, you know, like I said there, that's what you have here on the right is just a quick blurb on what are the different conditions that an NPC, a monster, or a player can get, okay? When we looked at the skills here, which we know are on page 174, there is a very quick breakdown. And I like you know, using it in this way where it lists them under what's the appropriate, the applicable stat or attribute. And I think when I have a quick reference point of this, what this does is this fosters the idea that I live by as a dungeon master, which is always find a way to say yes to your players, not no. You know that I'm really big from a dungeon master point of view, especially lately, of making everything about them. It's not about me anymore. I want them to have that wonderful experience. And in giving them the experience and the freedom and the enjoyment and entertainment, it makes me enjoy the game as well. I always want to be able to tell the players yes. So when a PC says, I need to muscle up and climb up onto that building and do a pull up and get up onto the roof. I may not know whether or not they have athletics or acrobatics or something like that. But instead of just shorting them by quickly referencing this and saying, you know what, acrobatics is dex based. I know that's kind of a dex based character. You know what, just give me a d20 and add your dex modifier. You know what I mean? That type of thing. So by listing them out under what the appropriate stat and applicable category is, they help me kind of create a little more option and opportunity for my players and I reward them for being clever. So that's why they're listed out here. On the right, I just have some little markers or, you know, if I want to track rations or how many arrows have I used or whatever it may be, I can use these for timers. Maybe I've rolled the D8 at the start of combat and at the end of eight rounds, something bad happens. I can use this to maybe help one of my players track something where you know that that summoning stone is going to summon the demon in five rounds. I can just simply write right up here demon and then start checking these off so you've got three categories of 15 so i potentially can track up to 45 things so i like just having that little blurb or sort of note-taking box there on the right covers another big one where just the same as conditions or vision and light and skills i want a little more information so we have just a little quick box here on cover the reference point for that we have another quick box on vision and light so lightly obscured heavily obscured and bright dim and darkness and kind of how they work OK, and then the rest is sort of more specific to the way I run and things that I have always found useful. Of course, I want to have my PC names. I don't write the real name of my players. In my case, I'm playing with my wife and my son and my cousin. So I know who they are as real people. But especially when it's session one, you know, I mean, we've played through five campaigns now and I run 10 players. So 
we've gone through like 50 plus characters, except for Justin, because my cousin Justin has died 19 times. So I've had to think through and talk about 67 different characters. So it's nice very quickly of, hey, what's your PC's name again? I can write that down and it starts bringing everyone into the role playing space when I can refer to them by their character name. So I write that down. Passive perception goes right here if I want to refer to that. I also sometimes have a rough blurb on AC which eliminates me having to constantly keep asking questions. I can just make those die rolls in combat and determine very quickly whether I hit. But also, these are things that I can take this sheet with me during prep for the next session. So when I'm calculating and making that and building that encounter, I kind of know, okay, the average AC for my group is such and such. I think this monster with a plus 13 to hit is a little bit too deadly. Instead of having to email them or text them and say, hey, give me your character sheet or what's your guys AC again? I have these as sort of quick reference points. And then miscellaneous is just whatever I might need. Similar to how I might help track a concentration or some spell effect that's on a PC, I can use this here to make a note and just simply say, such and such character is supposed to be doing this within the next three rounds or he was recently poisoned. Make sure he has disadvantage, you know what I mean? So on and so forth. So that's what this little section is right here. Date and time is paramount. This is really important for me to track. I like having a session date. This is real lifetime. So June 17th, 2020 and so on. And this just helps me figure out the flow of what sort of events might have happened, especially when I take some notes below. But also, my in-game start time and my end-game start time. This is the month of one Shay, the 19th day of the gardening, or whatever you want to call it, in the year 721 PK, whatever that means. But as I write that down, it kind of helps keep some consistency in the world, and it makes things feel like it's a living, breathing thing. And also, more importantly, it makes it feel as though the actions of my players are being accounted for in the world. Kind of like one of the strengths of the video game Skyrim, right? It feels like every place, every city, town you go to is a living, breathing thing. Whether you're there or not, you always feel like they're doing something. And when you use accurate time as it is in the, in the not the real world, in your gaming world, in your space, it makes things feel believable. Because when the PCs take too many long rests in one area, you can kind of track that and say, you know what, from when we started, even though you were supposed to finish this quest very quickly, you finished, according to my previous notes, seven days later. That castle you were supposed to go protect has already been sieged by the goblins. You took seven days. You shouldn't have rested that long. There's got to be consequences for those things. And by tracking time, it helps you stay very efficient in your flow throughout the entirety of a campaign. So that's really important. Here's another, just like the circles. I can write down sort of some little tracker and I've got, what is this, three, four, 14 boxes there whatever I need to track here, okay? It's just another little tracker, little note-taking part. I've got initiative if I want to use that. I do use oftentimes a separate sort of combat sheet that I'll use, but in this particular case, if this is enough for me and I'm only maybe having just one combat for the encounter, or I can have multiple, I can just scratch off their name and write down some more later on, but this helps me track the player in order very quickly. The other cool thing is by having, you know, one player's name is this guy's name is Conan. It's only going to take up, you know, that much space. I have enough space next to it to write some notes on what happened to Conan during that given round or so on and so forth. Just like I would be writing miscellaneous information here under his name. So I've got a little initiative tracker. And then if I have monster hit points, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm just going to zoom out again one more time, show you the bulk of what's here. This is actual size. Like I said, there is a little bit of information I need to convey and reference, so some stuff is very small, but I think it's feasible and manageable to work through. I'm gonna make a few changes and fix some things. Animal handling should be moved over a little bit so that it's not indenting down. And there's a period over here for this name that I'm gonna get rid of. So you're gonna see in the link here, when you download it, you're gonna see kind of the prim and proper fully edited sheet. But this is basically what you're getting. Hopefully it's something that you can find useful and can help you at your table and that's it. I hope everyone is doing the best they can these days, keeping well, keeping safe, staying creative, and just being productive in the, the gaming and creative space. Make some cool stuff out there. So more good videos to come soon enough when I can. That's all I have for you folks. Thanks everyone for watching and take care.